which is this apartment right here in Abovian, just outside of Yerevan. This is her daughter, Anush. And this is just at home, their family life at home. Car for the son, this is her son, Gevork. She shipped a car from Los Angeles to uh, Yerevan. This is not the car uh, uh, that she shipped, but I saw pictures of the car she shipped from LA to Yerevan. Digital cameras and bracelets. No, she didn't send a Kalashnikov, but she, uh, I couldn't, I like to just, this is kind of tongue in cheek shot, but this is uh, Silva's mother, and when I went to visit the family, um, she offered to pose with the Kalashnikov, so I just could, had to take her up on it. But, so this is um, family life back in Armenia. This is Silva's uh, two grand, uh, well, she has six, but this is two of, of the six. Um, I like this, this image because of the wallpaper in the back. It has this sort of otherworldliness, again, if that sh seems to be like it would be here, the Pacific Ocean maybe, but it's actually wallpaper in Armenia. And it, again, the theme of kind of not being here and sort of mentally being elsewhere for me comes through in this image. And these are the letters that go back and forth between Silva and her, her grandkids. <coughs> so the second person is Armin. He is younger, much younger than uh, Silva, and he's been away from Armenia for five years. He left behind a mother, a father, and a sister. He's not married, he's uh, single. And he drives a cab and edits uh, wedding footage here in LA. Here he is in LA on uh, one of the nights I went out with him on his shift. He, basically drives around Hollywood hipsters, and um, many of whom were very happy to be photographed. And basically, this is, um, this is what he does uh, to support his family, family back home. The purpose of Armin coming to Los Angeles originally was to buy a home for his parents. You'll now see the home they live in. He wasn't successful. He has, I don't think, has still been successful in buying them a home on the amount of money he, he makes um, driving the cab and um, also editing the wedding footage. Here we are at the end of this shift at a, a Thai restaurant we went to together. So this is Ar Armin's parents, uh, Hasmik and Zaven. This is the sort of makeshift uh, home they live in uh, on, the, on a platform, on a railroad, an old rail railroad platform, I should say. And this is sort of the here and there juxtaposition image of um, Armin's life in Los Angeles and uh, where his parents live. Again, a lot of togetherness um, in the images in Armenia. And in this family's case, they, the father in particular, Zaven, was really very proud of the fact that his son was in, uh, in the US, and there was this sort of feeling of confidence that no matter what happens here, we have our son there, so sort of nothing can go wrong. We all always have our backbone is, is on the outside. This is Hasmik, his mom, and again, the home that they live in now that they were very much hoping to, to change based on their the son's work outside. This is Armin's sister. So when I was there, they invited me to a mata, a uh, slaughter, a uh, lamb slaughter, although I don't think this is a lamb, it's more like a, a ram. Um, and they said that we're, this is, you know, uh, we're doing this, you know, in Armen's honor. But of course, you know, the money Armen sends pays for this, uh, the lamb slaughter. And it was a, a fascinating experience. Um, this is Armen's uncle who came from the village to do it because he said the Yerevansis don't know how to slaughter lambs. And so he has to come from the village to do it. And um, so I just basically photographed the process, and uh, at the end, the women are sort of um, washing away the blood, Armin's mother and sister. And that's my wrist. Uh, 
she wanted to put it on my forehead, but that wasn't really going to work with the camera. So we uh, compromised on my wrist. So that was Armin. Um, the third person, the third and final person I'm going to introduce you to is Azad Duhi, who at the time when we started this project was away from Armenia for about seven years. She left behind a mother, a father, and a brother. She originally came to the U.S. as a nanny, but now is working as a paralegal. And of the nine people I have in my project, she is sort of the most sort of professional or white collar in a sense, because she actually goes to an office every day and you know works um, for attorneys actually. So and interestingly, happens to live in the little Armenian neighborhood of L.A. Um, and goes to the um, church down at Alex Pilibos, that we all know, just in Hollywood. And here is the very corporate elevator she takes every day to, uh, to go to work at the, uh, at the office, the, at the law firm. I asked her what she um, misses most about home. And one of the things she said was the scent of her mom's cherry liqueur. The mom has a cherry tree in the backyard and, and um, uh, makes this beautiful cherry liqueur that I had the opportunity to taste. And uh, so that was one of the things she said she missed about home. So this is Armenia. This is uh, Azadubi's mother, Zavik. And she works in a, she's a seamstress, and she works in a mall in Yerevan, um, sort of this underground space where she works as a seamstress. And this is uh, my sort of juxtaposition image, less for the subject matter, more, I think, sort of for the composition. I thought it was kind of interesting, the um, sort of sidewayness of it. I don't know. It was kind of interesting to have those two next to each other. So Dikin Zavi basically, um, you know, shortens people's pants, you know, sews and does that kind of thing all day long. And again, on her walls, here's this poster of some other place that's uh, clearly not Armenia. She makes five dollars a day here, and which pretty much just covers her transport and you know, bread and something to eat that day. And I asked her why she does that, considering the fact that she doesn't make any money. And she said that it keeps her mind off of the longing she feels for her daughter. So I should mention that, you know, separate, this project is about families who haven't seen each other in all those years. So seven years, it means that nobody has been able to leave Armenia to come here and see their family member, and the family member here has not been able to go back. So it, it very much represents long periods of separation and long uh, periods of longing. Here is uh, Dali, you know, uh, with a customer. <coughs> this is um, Azadudi's father. He um, is, uh, works in the, the shoe industry, um, selling these shoes that, if you've ever been to Armenia, it's all the rage, these very pointy black shoes and I was so thrilled when I saw the uh, space because it's it just it's such such the um, it's such the fashion in Armenia to have uh, the pointy black shoes so uh, Baron Andranik was very happy to pose um, with uh, all his shoes for me and this is the last um, image it's basically at home and for me again this sort of shows the separation and the the longing and the the fact that this family is setting the table uh, without, without their daughter and they have dinner here um, every night without their daughter. I was, I was, I was the stand-in daughter that night. Um, this this uh, particular family, the idea was not to be separated, but the idea was for their daughter to leave and then for the family to reunite in terms of bringing the family to Los Angeles, but it hadn't, hasn't worked out yet and so They've been living apart for, um, at the time it was seven years, now it's been 10 years. Okay, so that is the, um, is the labor migration project. The last project I'll show you is how we live. And um, um, basically, I just want you to know that the first project was self-finance. So I didn't, that was just me going back and forth uh, between Armenia and Los Angeles. This project was actually a commissioned project 
by the Tufankhan Foundation. Uh, James Tufankhan